Happy Houdini International Day. It's an honor to be a part of this celebration. So thank you to Dorothy Dietrich and Dick Brooks for inviting me to present Houdini's novella, The Zanetti Mystery, plus candidates for ghostwriting the story. Who is Joanne Nataro? He is a Houdini nut for almost 50 years. Houdini historian. I started with these two books. I'm a Houdini collector. I've been collecting books, magazines, and movie related items. I'm also a Houdini blogger since 2011. I also consider myself a subject matter expert on Houdini's movies and his writings. And just recently, I became an Houdini author of The Zanetti Mystery. For more information on myself and my blog, please visit my website, Harry Houdini, Circumstantial Evidence. The agenda for this presentation is going to follow the table of contents of my book. So we'll start with uh, a dedication, and then that's followed by a foreword, which was written by my good friend, John Cox, with photos from Houdini's ghost, Patrick Culligan. Then will be the preface, where I discuss how the book came to be, and then we'll uh, look at an essay on candidates for ghostwriting the story, along with some uh, hidden nuggets. Uh, and then we'll uh, talk about the actual story itself and look at the characters. A sample of original illustrations by Edmund Frederick uh, and a prologue from one of the chapters, uh, followed by a review uh, written by John Cox that answers the question, is Houdini's mystery any good? Dedication. The book is dedicated to all Houdini nuts, devotees that enjoy laughter, silliness, folly, merriment, and friendship, and above all, share a passion for Harry Houdini. Since 2012, I've been participating in Houdini nuts get together. Uh, pictured here are, starting from the left, myself, John Cox, Arthur Moses, Patrick Culligan, and Stacy Zimmerman. This is at the Magic Castle in Hollywood, 2013. Um, as you can see, Houdini Nuts get togethers, an exchange of ideas regarding the life of Harry Houdini and his enduring effect on men or on modern history. A general good time to be had by all. Love those words. So the forward of the book is where we introduce uh, the Zanetti mystery, which was first serialized in newspapers beginning in December 1925. It's actually his last piece of public fiction. It's not widely known. And the story combines his love of mystery and detective fiction with his crusade against fraudulent media. In fact, Zanetti might be seen as the dark side of Houdini, what the magician feared he could have become had he remained in the business of spiritualist trickery. Houdini would sometimes play the character of Zanetti on stage during his exposure act. In fact, here is an advert of Houdini playing Zanetti at the New York Hippodrome in February of 1925. And if we actually read part of that advert, uh, it says Zanetti is a counterpart of one of the greatest fraud mediums who ever lived. And those who have witnessed the chicanery of this medium and then have had it exposed by Houdini will get interesting information, which has never been revealed to laymen before. As Zanetti, Zudini, Zudini, as Zanetti Houdini will demonstrate the 
the various phases of mediumship, such as reading, concealed letters, and locked and recorded slates brought by the committee and show how writing is secured in full light on the slates brought by skeptics. And here are some stills of Houdini portraying Zanetti. Uh, Zanetti would depict the next day's headlines and he would demonstrate a switch of blank slates for slates with pre-written spirit messages. On the left, you see Bess Houdini helping Houdini. And then on the right, we see Bess and Oscar Teal assisting Houdini. The preface. So Harry Houdini, he wrote a short novel, 1925, romantic thriller called The Zanetti Mystery. Ghost written, of course, talk a little bit more about that later, it was a short novel, eight chapters, and it was serialized over eight weeks in various newspaper. But it was never published in book form until now. In fact, it's likely that the Zanetti mystery would have been published in book form had Houdini not died suddenly on Halloween in 1926. As it stands, it's the longest and least known piece of Houdini fiction that has never seen print beyond its original serialization until now. So how did I come to publish the Zanetti mystery? In 2018, I actually came across chapter four newspaper clipping in a Houdini scrapbook at the McCord Museum. In fact, you're looking at uh, a photo of that actual uh, newspaper uh, clipping. It actually came from the Boot Miner, January 17, 1926. That was uh, again in a scrapbook that was put together by uh, a man named C.A. George Newman, uh, who's also known as Newman the Great. And uh, if you look at the right hand corner, there's actually a tight note that he put along with the newspaper clipping that I'd like to read to you. This one chapter is sufficient to indicate the type of Penny A. Liner literature dished out by the escape artist. The question is, who was the ghostwriter? That is an excellent question. In England, tales of this sort are known as Penny Dreadfuls. Well, you see, Newman the Great was definitely a critic uh, of Houdini and is kind of basing this off of just chapter four. Um, but, so I decided I would locate all eight chapters, read the entire uh, story, which I really enjoyed, and research who may have helped Houdini ghostwrite the Zanetti mystery which may be the greatest mystery of all. I then shared the Zanetti mystery over eight weeks on my blog. And then I, I, I heard from some of my colleagues. Uh, Tim King uh, commented, I was hoping the newspaper images that are hard to read could be scanned and published. And then our good friend John Cox said, I'd love someone to collect and publish the Zanetti mystery in book form. Then the mighty Arthur Moses uh, sent me an email and he said, I was thinking you can issue the Zanetti mystery as an Amazon book, kind of like he's done a number of books that he has written. So with the support of John Cox, Patrick Culligan, Tim King, Arthur Moses, and my copy editor, Desiree Wong, it is now in book form and much more easily readable than scanned newspaper images. In fact, here is a scanned newspaper image, which is pretty hard to uh, read. This was actually the first publication of the Zanetti mystery uh, that I could find, and it came out December 20th in the Indianapolis Star. 
Okay, candidates for ghostwriting the story. Uh, in the book, I write a uh, essay on this uh, who may have helped Houdini write. Uh, so Houdini was known to employ ghostwriters. In fact, it's been said that the majority of Houdini's published uh, writings were ghostwritten. So do we know who the ghostwriter was for this series? Well, this question was posed to John Cox and I by Tim King, who reads our Houdini blogs. John replied, I don't. It'd be wonderful if it was Walter Gibson. He was working for Harry Houdini at the time. And I replied, we don't know who the ghostwriter is, but my wag would be Fulton Osler also known as Sammy Frickle and Anthony, Anthony Abbott. He was an American journalist, playwright, editor, and writer who aided Harry Houdini in his crusade against fraudulent mediums. In fact, writing as Anthony Abbott, he was a notable author of mysteries and detective fiction. Well, in the essay on candidates, I take a closer look at these uh, suspects, Walter B. Gibson and Fulton Osler, as well as some other candidates, C.M. Eddy Jr., H.P. Lovecraft, Rose Mackenberg, and Arthur B. Reeve. But besides learning if any of those candidates played a role in writing the Zanetti mystery, you're also going to learn some other fascinating nuggets about the candidates. For example, you'll learn how and when each candidate met Houdini. You'll also learn who ghost wrote Houdini's weird tale stories. And you'll learn about other works for Houdini by these candidates. And then you'll learn which candidate may have played a role in the telling of the story of events leading to Houdini's death. My own theory. All right, let's take a look at the characters. The way the, the story is broken out, chapter one introduces you to the characters. There's also original illustrations by Edmund Frederick. Uh, and as you'll see, uh, if you look at all these illustrations, there is a girl in each of them, and that girl is Lucille Linton. She's an ex-course girl and social worker who has befriended the gopher and is in love with Wallace Haynes, her sweetheart, who's a promising young assistant district attorney. And then up in the left-hand side, that's Zanetti, the faker, spiritualist, medium, and sinister figure. And then next to him is Steinway, the aged billionaire, widower, and victim of Sanetti. And then Van Harlan, the medium's chief detective, who looks for unfortunate victims. Okay, in each chapter, starting with chapter two, has a prologue kind of recaps what happened previously. So I thought I would uh, share the prologue for chapter three so you could kind of get uh, a little taste of what the story's all about. So here goes. Herman Steinway, an aged millionaire, is being victimized in his belief in the spiritualistic powers of Zanetti, notorious fake media. Zanetti works a trip of psychology on the old man and establishes faith. Herman Steinway offers Zanetti $1 million if he will produce his deceased wife in the flesh. For just a few moments, Steinway explains that he must beg her forgiveness and hear her voice. Zanetti sends out his chief detective, Van Harlan, on this job. Meanwhile, Wallace Haynes, a young assistant district attorney, is making every effort to round up Zanetti as a faker. Lucille Linton, a social worker with whom Haynes is in love, finds a clue for her sweetheart when she calls on the gopher, who 
was an ex-convict. So now we'd like to find out is the Zanetti mystery any good? And our good friend John Cox did a review and shared his thoughts on Houdini's The Zanetti Mystery, which I'd like to um, go over. So, John found himself uh, swept up in the Zanetti Mystery. Uh, which is not something necessarily uh, you get swept up in uh, a lot of Houdini's other fiction, uh, and for that matter, his movies. But the Zanetti mystery was was different. Uh, John's biggest surprise is that this uh, novella was actually pretty good. Uh, it's basically a plot about a medium named Zanetti lands a whale of a client who offers him $1 million to conjure his dead wife in the flesh, which holds up today. In fact, it bears a striking similarity to William Lindsay Gresham's bestseller, Nightmare Alley. Gresham would go on to pen uh, the biography of Houdini. Um, so, could the Zanetti mystery have been his secret inspiration? Something to think about. Um, and also Houdini's uh, purpose in uh, creating the Zanetti mystery was to help further educate the public in the practices of uh, fraudulent mediums. Uh, you kind of get a peek behind the, the curtain of the mechanics of uh, spiritualistic uh, graft. And uh, it feels very authentic, and you kind of get a, a romp through the underworld of the 1920s New York. Um, and what uh, is kind of really interesting, there's even room for continued tales. And one even wonders if Houdini was actually considering a Zanetti uh, series. So, uh, to, to close with, uh, highlighted in red, uh, the Zanetti mystery is a must for all Houdini fans, and it is now his last published book and belongs on the shelf alongside his other works. And for those of you that decide to read the book, you might find yourselves pleasantly surprised that in the end, Houdini finally produced a work of fiction that has a life of its own. With that, I'm out of time. Thank you for your support. If you're interested in the Zanetti mystery, it can be found uh, at uh, Amazon sites. Thank you again.